Hi, Miss Megna. Uh, how is it going? Welcome Very to well. Welcome to Six Questions, uh, presented by Alnis. Uh, we are really, really proud to have you uh, with us, uh, Miss Megna Kilhani. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your role? Thank you for having me on this uh, six, con- six questions and, and this conversation. Uh, my name is Megna Kalwani and I am the Deputy Director for Global Learning and Student Life at SPG. And you can see in my background, that's our campus, uh, based in Academic City. We're an Australian business school and uh, we have students in uh, Singapore, Mumbai, uh, Sydney and in Dubai. And uh, I've been in the education sector for the last uh, 10 years now. I've moved from being an assistant professor to taking care of uh, student uh, services, which is dedicated to out of the classroom learning for undergrads to postgrads uh, across different ages. And it's a very diverse student community. And uh, I'm currently based in Dubai as well. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, we are going to start you off with six very, very difficult questions. Uh, everything about student engagement and student life and you know we we, we came up with these six questions uh, to make them difficult potentially uh, and we call the show six questions because usually I get carried away and I ask 10 12 questions so producers thought that it would be better to just name the show six questions so I always remember how many questions I get to ask all right uh, but before we begin uh, there are there are you know, we have millions of fans uh, so we keep getting uh, questions uh, live of course and uh, the question is, did you and Miss Meghna decide which uh, colors you would wear for this interview? No, no, there was no previous correspondence on this. White and black was just, it just happened. Uh, Your coincidence. Great minds think alike, at least this morning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, okay, so we can start now. Uh, the first question, uh, tell us about your professional journey uh, leading up to this point. Right, so I started off as uh, studying journalism, media and communication. I did my master's in UK. I worked there for a while and I entered education quite early. I was, uh, I, I started teaching at a very young age and I did that for the majority of my work experience life and I enjoyed it completely. And I was, uh, I loved, uh, I never actually left the university if you can say that. I enjoyed working with uh, young minds, I enjoyed working in this creative environments and it's always evolving and you, I, I consider myself as a lifelong learner so I, I think I thrived in, in this space and uh, I was an assistant professor in a media school and uh, I learned a lot in, in those five years and then I moved to SPG where I take care of uh, student engagement, student life, and global learning is what we call it at SPJ, where we kind of cultivate and uh, mold the student to understand uh, different environments, culture, and business, uh, and to make that all rounded professional and leader that we are, and give them that right edge uh, in this 21st century and as they enter the corporate world. So that's where I am right now and I curate experiences for students uh, to have that edge and to have that extra skill that they can apply outside the classroom and exercise that skill that they got in the classroom. So I've been here for five years as well and uh, it's, uh, it's a great journey and I hope to have that uh, drive and to impact communities since you know every year we get younger and younger students and every year it gets even more challenging especially with the pandemic that's on it's very interesting and it's a, it's a very good challenge to have and it's always fun working with student ideas and student environments so so yeah so i've uh, i think i've dedicated most of all of my working life to education with students you know the it's it's funny you say that when when, when dealing with students I, I've seen this, you know, when you're dealing with, I mean, I deal with a lot of professors and, and admin, you know, big people, uh, so to speak. And then we, and then I interact a lot with students as well. Uh, and I work with thousands and thousands of them each year, um, and uh, or each semester, I should say. And uh, every time I'm speaking to a class, the energy changes. The Like, everything is different. Like, you know, you're a different person. You check your worries out of the door. Um, and it's just, it's just a more, it's just, it's very, very invigorating. Um, and uh, especially, when you, and you touched upon the 21st century skills, uh, those soft skills. I think that's now become such a big buzzword. 
um, amongst all the schools, all the universities around the world, uh, where everyone's uh, scrambling to find ways to sort of put that together uh, in the university. And, you know, not just outside the classroom, but, you know, inside, or not just inside the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. Yeah, it's not, not a buzzword anymore. I think it's a necessity now. Yeah. It's such a competitive place now, and it's so much going on. And our soft skills that have been underestimated have, have become more and more important yeah. uh, in and out of the classroom. And I think there's no better place to learn it than outside the classroom because that's when you actually learn most of your life skills. Mm-hmm. I think absolutely. Perfect. All right. So uh, the next question is, um, so after doing all that, I mean, after teaching for so many years and dealing with so many students and universities and uh, being that lifelong learner that, uh, that, that, that you are, uh, how does it finally uh, feel to be on an interview uh, with me and, and six questions? Well, this, this, this is what I've actually been building for Thank all you. this time. <laughs> thank you, thank no, you so much. It's, it's a very good pleasure to be here and I thank you for recognizing me and uh, I'm happy to be here. And I hope that this interview will actually lead to a collaboration and uh, create some sort of impact in the student community itself. At the end of the day, I think all of us are doing this to make a difference and to help the students. So I hope that this would, this conversation might just spark an idea in Germany. Thank you so much. Uh, my mom will be so proud. She's from once in my life. Um, okay, all right, so moving on. Uh, second question. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what is missing in the student engagement efforts uh, that are being done by the universities today and how can we make that uh, better? I don't think anything is missing. I think everyone's trying to do their best. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges uh, would be tapping into the right conversations that stimulate the student mind because the student is always evolving with different interests. There's a lot of distractions out there in the in the world that a student might be lowered into or be prioritized more. So I think the biggest challenge, in my opinion, would be getting that right event or that right activity or that right form of engagement to ensure that the student is motivated and stimulated to connect. Because I think that social connection, physical or online, is the most challenging in having the right fit with the right student because your, di- your body, your student body is so diverse. You can't curate the experience of every single student. So I think that's why a lot of student affairs departments try and do different things at the same time just to see how it would have that impact among the students. The second challenge that I would see if you're looking at it from a larger point of view is the collaboration between universities to have a larger, stronger impact, which is easy to say, but sometimes difficult to do. And I think the larger the student body you possess and the collaboration with different universities who are in different points of view and different standpoints, sometimes collaborations can be trickier, but it's not impossible. So I think uh, that's something that we can work towards. Uh, but I think those would be my top two things that I can think of. But at the heart of it all is the student. And I think uh, connecting with that student with the right set of activities and engagement forms are the most uh, challenging sometimes. That's true. And you know, the it's not just the, it's not just the different backgrounds of where they come from in, in terms of nationalities or cities yeah. for that matter. Um, it's also the mindset that they come from, right? I mean, it's uh, it's the programs that they're in. And that's why we see in a lot of the universities that it's not just uh, the, you know, it's not just divided the events, not just divided to uh, year one, year two, year three, year four uh, students, it's divided into the faculties. And then what happens is that each faculty has their own events. Uh, and then they're uh, sort of uh, competing against other faculties. And then that's, uh, you know, you're, you're wanting for the same crowd over there. Uh, but what if a student wants to go to more than one activity? And I think, um, and, and you're right, I think not just the, the intra-university uh, collaborations, but also the inter-university collaborations. Um, I think- There are should... pros and cons to this. I mean, yes, if you're looking at it but from a particular faculty point of view, a lot of them are focusing on their student skill sets and therefore yeah. they focus on them completely. But I get what you're saying in terms of the collaboration between faculty, and that adds the competitive spirit. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure to people out there who are watching this might debate on the pros and cons. Yes, but yes, there, it, there is. There are more ways to make it more efficient or make it more effective. Uh, like Alice. <coughs> Sorry. 
we we didn't do it. This is 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 a great application, and I've actually been browsing it through it, and I think it could work very well. Yes, you have this collaboration, even though you said it in a cough. I think it's true. Well, so yeah, uh, no, we we don't like to name drop. Sometimes it just happens. Uh, <laughs> all right, so moving on to the third question. All right, uh, how do you think? Um, I mean, we, we touched upon this just a little bit in the, in the, in the previous question. Um, you know, with the micro communities, um, and uh, of course, now in this news houses, uh, you know, which is pretty prevalent to anyone who's grown up in the UK system uh, of education. I mean, pretty well aware of it. Of course, Harry Potter sensationalized all over the world. Uh, but how do you think micro communities like houses uh, could bridge that gap between student and university? Because when we were doing the research uh, for Alice, that was the one thing that uh, we were sort of that was the one big disconnect between the student and the university, where the student thought that they were too small to affect anything in the university, and there was a big sort of gap between the communication between. Um, you know, a lot of the well, communication would be the bit, would be the of course it would be all encompassing, uh, but that sense of belonging wasn't there uh, for the students um, because the, the institution was so big. But um, how do you think uh, micro communities can bridge that gap? I think micro communities are extremely important. I've grown up with micro communities myself from a school and a university level. It does lack in a university level, and we compensate that by having different councils and clubs and different other formats of micro communities, which attracts like-minded people together to work together. But a housing system is also interesting, or different forms of micro communities, because at the end of the day, we're just trying to. Create that social engagement, create that social bonding, get people who are like-minded to come together and have that trigger that conversation that can actually lead to lifelong friendships. And I think that's the value micro communities can bring in because, as you said, we have large diverse student bodies, and it's difficult to connect everybody to everyone. Absolutely. And I think that's where micro communities are an ideal fit. And even in our own society, we have different micro micro communities that are doing so well. And a lot of magic happens through those micro communities. So, I think uh, yes, it's very important, and it's uh, from a student point of view, it's very important uh, to create that social bonding. Perfect. And also, you know, I think that for people in certain houses, you know, especially when they're when they're in the system, so to speak, uh, they can actually look to other people within that system. I mean, and uh, you know, find not just the like-minded people because there are going to be other people in that house as well. Um, but you know, different years and maybe get to get some advice on how to do things or you know, what did you do in year one or year two. I mean, when I went to university, I, I feel like that was a bit lacking as well. Uh, the only place where I could find older people was uh, when I used to take cricket um, for the for, for the university, and uh, you know, it was I used to try to make friends with the older people just that I could ask them if they had any assignments. Well, we won't go there. All right, so uh, three questions uh, are up. Uh, so it's time for the the halftime uh, the, the, the halftime uh, question. So if you could have your phone out, we will ask you the question, uh, and then I will award you the points. Um, so do you have your your uh, your phone with you? Okay, perfect. And I open the app. Yes, you uh, can open the app, um, and then uh, you can go into. Are you in the Alma's classroom? See six questions. Yes. Okay, six questions. So you're in the. Okay, so uh, you can um, you can attend the event. Yeah, attending. Perfect. All right. So and now you can uh, once you uh, once you're there, you can just uh, it should say uh, request points for attendance. Shows I am attending for now, and then uh, it says show QR code. QR code. Yeah. So just uh, when I, after I ask you the question, uh, you can show me the QR code, and I will uh, give you uh, the I will give you the, uh, the, the points Thanks. if you if you are correct. Okay. So the question is, uh, what in there, there's four there's four options basically. I know it's a very very difficult question. So in uh, Harry Potter, uh, oh, what Harry was Potter. what was Harry Potter's bird's name? Uh, option number one, uh, Chintu. Uh, option number two, Chimpu. Um, option number three, Hagrid. Option number four, Hedwig. 
bird's name, right? Yes, the owl's name. So, option number D. You are correct. Oh my God, that was uh, that was extremely difficult, but uh, we finally got it. So that's good. Uh, Hedwig is the right answer. So if you want, just uh, show QR code on your phone, and then you can show it up to the screen. Well, it shows. I think with the background it might be tricky. Uh, just a second. It's actually, yeah, it's actually going to be a little bit tricky because of the background. It's fine. You can watch with the. Perfect. All right, we've given you the points, uh, so they should be added into your system a little later. Check that. All right, so congratulations on uh, passing the, the halftime quiz. Uh, I know we, we, we intentionally make it so hard to uh, you, you pass it with ease. Yeah, it was very tough between the Chintu and uh, <laughs> I what the second name was. <laughs> oh, yes, you can blame uh, Pallavi for that. Uh, she's, uh, she's good at coming up with these questions. Okay. All right, if, so, this Hari, if this was Hari Putter, I think then Chitta would have been the right I, I think that would be. Yeah, I, think that, Indian version, okay, I, think I think there was a movie like that. I think there was Hari Putta. Uh But um, yeah, I would like to watch that. I would like to watch the Indian version of it. Okay, so uh, question number four What kind of events um, are students looking to attend these days? Uh, what motivates them? You said. You, you said earlier that you know there are different kinds of events that people want to attend. So, I mean, and you're in the thick of things. Uh, of course, COVID things have changed, but by and large, nowadays, what kind of students, uh, what kind of events do students like to attend? I think the best students uh, that are curated are the ones that are decided and curated by the students themselves. And, you know, because that's where the interest lies. From our student body, most of the interest lies in business events and uh, cultural events as well. Those are a very good mix of events that we host. Uh, we host an annual uh, business festival in Dubai. We have TEDx conferences run in Sydney and Singapore, even in Dubai sometimes. We are planning to host the Pecha Puja at some point. We have a lot of cultural festivals because we have a very diverse student body. So we're celebrating Chinese Lunar New Year to Diwali to Holi to Christmas to the Day of the Dead. So it really depends on what kind of uh, nationalities we have in the class and how we can curate those experiences. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have another uh, annual event that is the Spirit Week, which is aimed to instill campus pride. So we have a lot of uh, intra-competitive events and intra-showcases that will allow students to showcase the talent and uh, kind of get to meet people in those in those micro communities that you just mentioned. Uh, we have uh, so so it's a very interesting mix. I don't think we've ever had a year that is ditto from the last year or the last term. Every year and every. Uh, semester changes based on the students that we have and I think that's the beauty of it because the student interests are constantly evolving the the, the way we also do it is, is, is evolving so with the, with the pandemic on we can't ignore the fact that there's a pandemic on it has changed the way how student experiences are curated now so it's a very mix of online and hybrid rather than the typical face-to-face -face events that we used to curate so I think a lot of Creativity uh, and and I think what makes a good event is when it comes of when students are involved. It gets them to exercise different skills, and uh, they're able to also look at other universities, invite them over, and create those smaller events for themselves. So I think it really it really depends. But I know that we have a uh, few marquee events that we conduct on a yearly basis, and this is city wise because we're not just doing it in Dubai. We do it across in Singapore, in Mumbai, in Dubai, and in Sydney. So each year is a different experience for a student, typically. And uh, and it's each year has a council of its own drive it. And we have, as we are facilitators, we are just facilitators to ensure that the students, you know, steer the ship in the right direction. And I think that's, I think what you, what you said was like nail on the head, right? Uh, if the event is, um, is conceptualized or is uh, takes into account what the students want to do, uh, then it's the it has the it has those legs to become such a, like a mega event. And I think you know you can take a simple example, right? Uh, and this is something that uh, my niece who was in university up till last year, uh, she's graduated now. But I mean, I, I was speaking to her, so she was part of the the campus uh, events team and 
you know, she's the, the Campus Life uh, team in Canada. And uh, she told me, she was like, you know what, absolutely, we don't know what events students want to do. Um, so there could, if there was a way for us to find out. So for example, uh, students can vote on, uh, you know, what kind of event they want to have. They want to have a FIFA night, uh, or do they want to have a, a, a games night, uh, like, yeah. a, you know, like a, you know, Monopoly or something like that, or do they want to have a movie night, uh, or do they want to go to the park, right? Yeah. Um, so, or go to the beach. So we can have maybe five options, and all the students can vote uh, on it, right? So we know exactly what the students want to do, uh, and then, for example, if they pick movie night, uh, then we can maybe ask another question: Which movie would you like to watch? Would it like would it be the Harry Potter series? Maybe we can watch two or three movies from there. Would it be the Lord of the Rings series? Uh, would it be Matrix or would it be some uh, Rajni Khan movie because everyone loves action? Uh, so you know, it's it's one of those it's one of those things where immediate feedback in today's day and age is so important that we need to draw from them, um, and it's so easy to do. I mean, we can do it with the app, but I mean, it's so easy to do, or we can just and we incentivize them to actually vote, right? I mean, it's not just uh, you know you. Yeah, there, there's there's a poll over here. Should we do it? Should we not do it? No, there's actually an incentive to do it, right? And uh, and that gives us or people in, uh, in in our students that valuable information. What do the students want to do? And then we can actually make the success. Uh, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's for them, and they are the heart of everything that we do. Exactly. We're very, we're very student centric as a school as well. Yeah. So I think uh, yes, absolutely, I agree with what you said. And this is your the example that you shared is something that we also do to host a Netflix party. You can't just host a party without knowing uh, what your guests want. So I think uh, it's yeah. exactly the same concept with every single event we've done. Exactly. Perfect. All right. So next question: uh, What role does gamification play in the future of higher education? So, being part of SBJ, and I've seen innovation at the heart of it, and uh, we, I think gamification is very important, uh, and it's growing. I think we're still figuring out the hows and the, you know, the best ways to do it for our students. But I think gamification is absolutely a very good way to engage with students. I know that we have technology in our classrooms as well. We have tablets, we have apps of our own that engage with our students. And I think it will be interesting to gamify it a bit more to have that uh, fun element because you can't learn without the fun. You can't learn without the doing. And I think that's where gamification comes in as a very strong uh, advantage. Uh, and I think that's, I think the future is heading there. It's already there. We're already halfway in. So I think there's no going back uh, with the classroom with no gamification. We have a lot of Kahoot quizzes, we have a lot of uh, engaging ways our faculty and how we also do our student life activities in very fun, innovative ways. So I know there's a lot of way to gamify it and make it a little more fun rather than a standard, yeah. from, you know, one way approach of doing events. It's not like me dictating, me doing something for a cohort, it's a very fun way of learning that we have to apply. I think definitely is the future. We are already headed there. We have no choice. Yeah. It's time to embrace it. Otherwise, you're going to perish Absolutely. in this day and age. So definitely, hundred percent important. Um, and it's just a matter of how you do it. Absolutely. And I think that the, you know, and and there has to be. It's like a good sitcom, right? I mean, the, your your university life. Uh, I just watched the Friends reunion episode last night, so you know, I'm still in the sitcom mode. Um, TMI. All right. Uh, okay. So it, there has to be a sort of uh, you know every event counts, but there is and there are going to be different events in the lifestyle of or the life of a student, and there's the student life is going to be over four years or five years or two years, or whatever length of time that the student is there. So there there are going to be many events, but there always has to be a baseline as well. Um, right, I mean something that's tracking their university career or their university life, um, and sort of not just documenting it for the serious purpose, but also facilitating those fun aspects of it, um, so that they can—they're uh, not just playing uh, themselves, but they're playing a different version of themselves inside the app. So I think that's. And also, it's not just learning. You're not just learning it from a knowledge transfer point of view. Yeah. You're also developing a lot of other skills, like social, exactly. your event, different things. So I think it's definitely, definitely important to gamify all that from a professional and a personal point of view. 
Absolutely, and just incentivize them. I mean, the, the, that's the whole, the, the, the whole, the whole. I mean, crux of game education is incentivizing students, right? Incentivizing the player to do something or to play more. Unfortunately, that's how we are headed because everything is incentivized and what's in it for me. Yeah. Sometimes I don't like that. I mean, it also yeah. should be about driving it on your own and learning it for yourself. But I do get where you're going with this. Everything is now app based, points based, rewards based, incentive based. So Instagram I think based. Yeah, it really, it really, yeah, and likes and comments are all gratifying ways to to yeah. get something out of it. And I think um, that's where our generation is at this point. So I think that's, I, that's where we're headed. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, no. absolutely. I think, and I think as a, as a human and as a society, we are very driven by rewards. So I think incentivization and gamification go very well hand in hand. So yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think um, it it is one of those things that again each person is going to have their own opinion on it. Uh, right. I mean, should you learn for yourself? Should you learn for you know just to document it? But again, everyone. I think everyone's right in their own ways. And I think that's that's the, that's the learning thing. in a way is an incentive. But I think everyone has a different taste. You know, everyone has yeah. a different trigger for an incentive. So yeah, points and you get something for free. I mean, yes, why not? A free jersey uh, is always is always nice. Okay. All right. Um, uh, having heard last question. Uh, having heard and seen what Alanis is. Uh, how do you think it could contribute to student engagement and success? I think it would uh, contribute to organizing in a bit because now with, since you mentioned gamification and everything has an app, so why not this? I think we have followed a very traditional route, at least from a school's perspective, from even if you're going to high school, they have a very traditional way of using the house system. So kind of upgrading that and bringing it into the university sector is a new concept. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. We do have our own versions of it, but it's not uh, It's not something that's, you know, I've not seen at university, yeah. except across university. So I think it's an interesting way to create that friendly competition, put people in different micro communities, like you mentioned, gamify it a bit with different rewards, have large student bodies who have a chance to get to know who is who and where's what. I think it brings everything in one platform, which is interesting. So I think it definitely has a good concept that has a chance to thrive in a university community, especially in UAE, because UAE we have so many universities, and I doubt that a student is able to interact with more than five or six, or maybe maximum of a ten in a year. Uh, depending on the community or place that he is on or she is studying. So I think it's interesting to cross collaborate and also get to know the university space a bit better uh, during that four or three years of his or her study. So I think it definitely has an uh, interesting scope and I like and I know as uh, we are considering also being part of Alamis to see how it works with our students. So I think it'll be interesting to have this conversation maybe a year from now to see how it actually worked and what went well and what didn't. That would be interesting. That's, that's a good idea. We can do that. Uh, another good idea for you. Let's make that. All right. Uh, perfect. So thank you so much uh, for all that. And inshallah, we can hope uh, that we can uh, start with the SPN student and the students. Uh, and we can come back in a year and we can uh, say that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean that's that's all that we're trying to do right we're trying to make uh, everything a bit more fun and I think uh, with Alanis uh, what you said this uh, a couple of minutes ago um, that learning should be fun uh, if you take the fun element out of university then it's just it doesn't work uh, right the whole, it's like the it's like the gel that keeps the the, 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 the engines going right oil and uh, you know if you it, for, with Alumnus, we did a lot of market research. Uh, and our market research, actually, it, to be honest, was not working that much with the, with the admin side of the university. It was more working with the students, uh, asking them uh, what did they want to do? Uh, what, you know, what, what made them tick? What would you like to see in the university? Would you like to be incentivized to go to an event? Would you, uh, would you like it if the university valued your opinion? Uh, on every small thing, um, you know, for example, there's a cafeteria and there's a small space. Uh, do you want a McDonald's there or a Starbucks there? Uh, you know, it could be something something like that, or it could be something as simple as a movie night, right? Uh, but valuing their opinion and getting them to be on board uh, with events and how easy it would be for them to look at 
what events are playing, things like that. So we we did a lot of market research from the students' perspective, and then we did a lot of research from the the admins' perspective, and then we married the two of them. Uh, but we made sure that it would be fun for the students, um, and you know, not something that was too serious. But thank you so much uh, for being on the show. Before we go, uh, we would like to get your opinion on how we did. Uh, how was the interview? How was the interviewee? Or how's the interviewer? Sorry, uh, my mom likes to see these ratings. Um, you know, because uh, she needs to be. This somebody needs to be proud. Um, of Tell your mom that she should be very proud, and I thank think uh, you're doing a great job. So thank you. Um, so the the, the 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 first question is for my mom. Second question is for my wife. Because you, <laughs> all we try to do is impress everybody else. But if you uh, can take the time out to just uh, fill in the survey, uh, we'd be so happy, and you will get points for it. Um, so everything yeah, is. I got my points already. Yes. Okay, so uh, you get, uh, and and that's the way we sort of incentivize, uh, you know, people doing polls and you know, you know, giving and doing the polls after the events. Like that. Anyways, uh, so thank you so much uh, for being on the show. Uh, we really, really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed this. Then thank you so much for having me.